Hello and uh, welcome to another playbook. This one is uh, is a lot in demand because after I did a playbook on Metrics 101, what are the metrics that you should look at uh, when you're building a product? Uh, it had a deep dive into retention, engagement, active user base. A lot of people ask for, uh, how do you actually view these metrics, right? So if you had a live product, how what are the metrics that you would look at on a day-to-day -day basis? So this, uh, this video today, this playbook is on how to create a health dashboard of metrics for a live product, for a product which is out in the market. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna sort of dig deeper uh, into building a health dashboard uh, using, uh, uh, using this example. So now let's first figure out what is a health dashboard, right? It's very similar to when you go to a doctor, right, for a checkup. There are a couple of things that doctors note, you know, they, they ask you, they check your blood pressure, they check your heart rate, they, they weigh you, they, they, you know, sort of they note down your BMI, they, they ask you a set of questions to sort of figure out, to sort of give a very high level sense of, are you doing well or not? And then they dig deeper. So, you know, they might suggest that they do an ECG or they might do a few scans and get a better sense. But essentially, your vitals in one place, right? So exactly that, what are the set of metrics that you look at on a day-to-day -day basis to understand whether your product is healthy or not? So imagine first day, first thing in the morning, uh, you come to office or you, you sort of open up your laptop, open up your dashboards. What is it that you want to know about your product? What happened yesterday in my product, which will tell me in real time whether things are going well or not and that essentially is the health dash dashboard of uh, of your product that contains a set of metrics which tell you whether things are going well or not and based on the trend lines you will be you'll be able to make decisions and you'll be able to figure out if there are interventions that you need to do so second thing is in a health dashboard all the metrics would be leading metrics now Let's try and understand the difference between leading and lagging metrics. Lagging metrics are metrics which show you their result much later than the actions you've taken in the product. A leading metric is a metric which will immediately start changing. So if you build a good onboarding funnel in your product, pretty much after you have launched it, all the new users who now come to your product should ideally have better throughput rate through that funnel. So if you have been trying to improve the click-through rate through this funnel, so opening screen, you know, the login screen, you enter your phone number, you add in your OTP. Suppose you changed your, uh, pass, uh, your OTP provider, right? The SMS provider has been changed and you had a really faulty one and, you know, there was uh, uh, a third of your uh, SMSs weren't even reaching the intended audience. Then essentially, You've now moved to somebody who sort of promises you a 90% delivery rate. You would realize that the number of people going through your uh, login flow, which is through an OTP authentication, has increased, right? So immediately, within a day or two of the launch of this uh, feature, the launch of this new provider, you would realize that your uh, onboarding funnel has improved. This is a leading metric, right? Like the moment you make a change, you're able to notice a very distinctive change in a particular metric. A lagging metric is something which changes much later, much, much later. So for example, you make a bunch of changes in your product with the hopes that your product's month over month retention improves. Now that month over month retention will only improve, you'll only know what your M1 or M2 retention is after a month or two, right? So it is a lagging metric, right? It, it changes much later. There could be leading indicators to the fact that your long-term retention has improved but the actual measure itself is a lagging metric and you would only know if things have improved after a certain amount of time, right? Uh, user trust in your product has increased or your overall NPS score has increased are also lagging metrics. They don't immediately start changing. You measure something like an NPS with your, uh, with your promoters, with your most sort of uh, hardcore users, every 90 days so you know it's, it's something that you can look at only every 90 days and the trend line only shows changes after a long time so and things like net promoter scores uh, show you results much later so they are all lagging metrics so in a health dashboard 
typically we want to look at as many leading metrics as possible. You do keep track of your lagging metrics also, but more and more you want leading metrics in there so that you can act on them and make changes. The last bit is that your health dashboard should clearly capture trends. It should show whether a metric is going up or going down. So trends are shown in a number of ways. Trends are shown by comparison. So if you are looking at today, yesterday's data, you should compare it to day before yesterday. You should compare it to the previous week. You can perhaps compare it to a month ago, right? And this will show you a trend. This will show you if things are changing or not over time. And that's very, very critical for product managers. And the last bit, any of these metrics, you should be able to double click on them and go deeper. By, by double clicking, I mean that when required, you can move away from your health dashboard and ask your analysts or ask your team to run more queries and dig deeper into why a certain set of metrics have fallen. So there is a secondary and a tertiary layer of metrics which allow you to dig deeper, right? It's the equivalent of going in for a CT scan or an MRI at a, when a doctor feels that there might be something wrong, right? Or, or doing a, a set of uh, blood tests. Those are sort of the secondary metrics that doctors look at to, f to actually sort of pinpoint, to figure out root cause analysis of problems. Similarly, for our health dashboard, there are things that we look at if we know that, if we feel that there might be a problem and we want to dig deeper and find out the reason for those problems. So what we're gonna do now, <coughs> we'll figure out a product. So I've, I've created this um, made up game called Crossy Bubbles, right? The reason I'm choosing a game, I, I, I mean, and again, metrics in general are useful to this sort of understanding and this sort of thinking, building a health dashboard. These are useful for any anyone who's building products, whether you're building consumer products or SaaS products or enterprise products, B2B, B2C, does not matter. The reason I'm taking the example of a game is because games are where metrics change a lot on a day, uh, day in and day out. So there are a lot more leading metrics and in general gaming companies look at a lot more metrics than a lot of other people. Consumer tech is probably, uh, consumer and content based products are probably the only other place where people dig so deep into metrics. So which is why I'm taking the example of a game. So Crossy Bubbles is this made up game, it does not exist, right? And what I've done is I've given you a snapshot of what a daily health dashboard would look like uh, on this game, Crossy Bubbles. So imagine today was the 29th of July and I can see yesterday's data. So essentially the first thing that you look at is you have a column for all of yesterday's data. You have a column of D minus one, so a day before, and you have a column of D minus seven. So you want to compare a week before that. So if today is D zero, you want to see D minus one and D minus seven, right? Uh, so the first set of things that we would look at is we look at the acquisition funnel. So we can see that a week ago, we were, we got 32,000 new installs. Yesterday we got 50,000 and today, uh, sorry, day before yesterday we got 50,000 and yesterday we got 55,000. So clearly we've increased the number of installs. Why has that increased? Because we've started paid marketing on our game and we are predominantly using two sources for getting paid installs. Source one has been slowly scaling up and has gone from 7,000 installs a day to 8,000 installs. And so has source two is now at 8,000 installs. We can also see the cost per install. So we can see that uh, our cost is reducing. And as you scale up a campaign, so it was, you were getting each install at 95 rupees. Now it's coming at 90 rupees. For source B, uh, it could be a different ad network. Uh, the, the cost per install was 85 rupees and now it's come to 75 rupees, right? Now this is essentially telling you what each, uh, what are the sources which are getting you your installs and what are the costs of getting these installs. Then you look at a blended cost. So your entire install base uh, divided by the total amount of money that you're spending and that will show you your cost of acquisition. So this is your blended cost of acquisition. Overall for your 55,000 installs, you're spending about 24 rupees per install, right? So this is the first set of things. And again, you can double click for full funnels, impressions, conversions, app store conversions, right? But this is what you would look at at a double click if you want to dig deeper. From this, it looks like uh, if these was the, these numbers were our target sort of markers for cost per installs, and maybe we have, it looks like we're doing well and these two sources are scaling up well, we would hope that our CPIs would reduce further and maybe our target CPI is to add, say, getting 100,000 installs per day from each source, we would like the cost per install to be at 60 rupees or 50 rupees, right? 
The next thing we look at is our active users. So again, if you look at the metrics playbook, you'll understand the definition of active users. So we look at three types. We look at daily active, weekly active, and monthly active. Yesterday, our daily actives were 110,000 users. Our weekly active were 45, uh, 450,000. So essentially, our users, our DAU by WAU ratio is about one by four. So users play our game less than two days a month. So it's not great, right? Uh, it, it's sort of been constant. 90 by 370 is the same as 105 by 420. So this ratio has pretty much remained consistent over time. Uh, it was a little better yesterday, a day before yesterday. And then you have your monthly active users, right? So your monthly active users is, is, is telling you that your DAU by MAU ratio is one by seven, which means people only play this game four times in a month. So this number is not great, right? And this number could be falling because of the quality of your installs but you should double click and look at churned users, revived users, uh, but your app's engagement, your game's engagement is definitely a cause for concern. And this is where you can sort of dig deeper into your engagement data. So sessions per day per user, how many times do users play every day? So it's about 3.2, 3.2. So this has not fallen even though we are getting a lot of paid installs, so that's good, which means the average user comes back to the product about three times a day. You should double click and always have percentile distributions. I've, I've, there's another video which talks about why averages are very misleading and you should look at percentiles, but at a high level, you can look at averages, but you should always dig deeper and look at quartiles and median values uh, just to get a better sense of how the app is actually being used. Time per session. Each time when the user does come back to the app, they spend about two and a half minutes and this has clearly been going up. And so the time spent per user per day in minutes is about this 3.2 multiplied by 2.5. So essentially about eight minutes per day is what users are spending in your product. Your weekly engagement, as I was saying, was your DAU by WAU. So that's about 24% and that sort of remained in that same uh, zone. Your monthly engagement, however, is about 15%. So again, engagement, as I said, is not a great uh, indicator. And from a gaming perspective, your engagement should be much better. You should have users on an average playing you two, three times, four times a week, maybe about eight, 10 times a month, right? Now let's look at retention, right? And in retention, what you do is you look at the D1 retention. So essentially D1 retention on this day was essentially of this cohort. So of the people who installed the app on uh, 27th, how many of them came back on the 28th? And that answer is 44%. And similarly, users on 26th who came back on 27th was 43 percent and from a week before d7 retention is 40 percent all right uh so uh, d d7 sorry uh, a week before the d1 install retention was 40 percent then you look at d7 retention all right so from a week before to yesterday from a week before to day before yesterday from a week before that to last week and you realize that your retention and sort of d7 retention and month one retention are all in the same area. So even though you've started paid marketing, your D1, D7 and monthly retentions have not fallen, which is again a good sign, which means that the quality of your installs coming in from these install sources is good. So retention by source can also be here. So this could be a double click item. You should also look at cohort graphs and that's something again we have spoken about in the metrics video. You should look at have your co cohorts been performing well? Has your D1 retention been improving over time because of new feature addition? Has your D7 retention been improving over time? The last bit that we want to check is revenue, right? So we realize that, hey, the number of our paying users, so as we have increased the number of installs, our paying users have also been steadily going up, and this is a very good indicator. We used to have 1,700 paying users, right? So if you look at previous, we had, when we had 32,000 installs uh, and only about 90,000 DAU, we had, uh, we had about 1,700 paying users, but now our DAU has gone up to 110K, and we have 3,000 users. So number of paying users has definitely gone up the average revenue per paying user. So these each of these users is spending about 50 rupees in the app, and this has also been steadily going up. So not only have the number of payers been increasing, but also the the amount that they are paying each day is increasing. So your total revenue has, has quite drastically gone up. You also calculate the average revenue per user. So these 150Ks of 1.5 lakhs, essentially 150,000 rupees, was made over a base of 110,000 users. So you can have the average revenue per user per day, right? And which is 
about 1.36 rupees. So these sort of metrics, this quick snapshot, right? And this could come in an email to you every morning, or you know, you can set up an automatic dashboard email or any any analytics tool that you use. This is the sort of a dashboard that you would look at. You know, you would look at your acquisition and acquisition by source. You would look at your active user base, DAU, WAU, MAU. You would look at your engagement of your product. Time, time spent in the product per user, weekly engagement, monthly engagement. And you would, you, would, you would look at retention cohort numbers and you would look at revenue. And this is how you, uh, you know, this is the health dashboard of your product. This is what tells you whether your product is healthy or not. And based on the trend lines, whether things have changed from yesterday, a day before yesterday to yesterday or a week before to yesterday, you can take calls as to whether there are things, there are interventions that you want to do, right? So hope you enjoyed this video. Do catch the uh, video on Metrics 101 and that video combined with this, these two playbooks will be very helpful for you to build health dashboards for your own products. Uh, we will be doing more product deconstructs and we will be building health dashboards for publicly available products. It's difficult to get hold of their data. So, you know, based on their uh, public listing and their public filings and data that they share publicly, it's possible to sort of create a dashboard say for a product like a twitter or a product like youtube but at least this gives you even this made up product gives you a sense of what are the kind of health dashboards and what are the kind of metrics that one should look at take care bye and uh, hope you keep watching playbooks and uh, subscribe to the channel bye